Hi class. I had a question today on how to set up a site from scratch, uh, a PHP site that is. Um, well, we, we covered it Monday and Tuesday. On the other hand, I'm absolutely sure that doing it once and covering it as we did Monday and Tuesday isn't enough for you to learn exactly how to set up a site. And it's not as if there's just one answer to how to set up a PHP site. You can see for yourself if you check some of the books on PHP or uh, the, the tutorial on lynda.com. But, um, but let me show my approach, what I like to do. I'm in NetBeans and I'm going to create a new project here. A PHP application. Let's call it basic site. I'm going to create a folder for it in my um, in my XAMP. So XAMP HT docs make a new folder. What did I say? Basic site. Select that to open and runs as a local project. So here's a NetBeans project, completely empty. And to get started, I always want an index.php file. Index should be my single point of entry. That's the only file users will ever load into their browser directly. Let me just see if my project is set up correctly. I like to, uh, when I start to develop new projects, I like, to, I like to start with very few lines of code between tests. So here, echo, it works. Let me run that. And it works. I get the output when I load the index file into my browser. Now, PHP can work with variables. Page has its demo. Oh, let's make an H1. It still works. Semicolon at the very end. And instead of echoing a string, let me echo whatever is inside the variable page as HTML. So this dollar page as HTML is a variable. It's a structure I've invented. I've just made up this name. We could call it anything. But I've called it page as HTML and it holds at this point an HTML string. And that will be echoed, that is, sent to the browser. And it still works. If I inspect the source code, I get to see my H1. So everything works as I hope for. If I wanted to refine my site, I could add a little more content. So it still works. Isn't it great? In a paragraph. Now, there is an error here, but uh, a logical error. But let me just show you what the problem is. I only see, isn't it great? The thing is, the page as HTML is declared in line 3 to hold my h1. And then in line 4, it is once again declared with a paragraph. So in line 4, my page as HTML will be overridden. So what it was will be forgotten about, deleted, and instead it will hold just the paragraph. Now I want it to hold the heading and the paragraph, and to do that I use incremental concatenation dot equal. That little dot in front of the equal sign will add the paragraph at the end of the H1 string here. Save, refresh, and there it is. It still works. Isn't it great? An H1 and a paragraph added at the end. That's what incremental concatenation does for us. Now, I'd like, actually, to um, output a proper HTML5 page. 
and perhaps you're like me and you can't exactly remember what such page looks like but if I create a new HTML page with my editor knit pins I get an empty template I really just need the uh, the um, template for the HTML here and once I've got that I can delete the file again <coughs> So page as HTML should be equal to all this. NetBeans tells me there is a syntax error in line 7. It's the double quote. I've got a double quoted string here. <clears throat> so the, the initial double quote tells PHP that the uh, what comes after is a string. And when PHP comes to the next double quote, it will assume, oh, that's the end of the string. So PHP will assume this is the string to save in page as HTML. And because of that, PHP will expect what comes after to be some sort of valid PHP expression. And it's not. It's something that belongs with the HTML. To avoid this problem, I simply replace the double quotes with single quotes. So the rule of thumb is if I have a double quoted string use single quotes inside. If I have a single quoted string use double quotes inside. Either way we're good to go. <clears throat> Let's just write a test title and there's the to-do dummy content there. Let's take a look at that. There's my well-formed HTML5 page echoed with a test title on display and my to-do write content. What I'm after is to get PHP to help me separate content from markup. So I could use a variable title for title and a variable con content. Let's go with content instead. Content for uh, content inside the body. And I'm, I'm going to get rid of the, the diff there. I may want a diff, but I certainly don't want it to be there all the time. Right. So because line 8 assumes a title variable, I need to declare a title variable before line 8. My test title. And the same with the content in line 12. Content equals my site works. Whatever. <coughs> Let's try that. I've got my content above a an HTML template here. Save, refresh browser, my site works. Refresh. So here's my well-formed HTML5 template populated with content provided by PHP. That's pretty good. But I'm not too happy about this dollar title. Probably before I'm done with this site, say if, if I'm building a recipe site like you guys are, maybe I will want a title for a recipe. Uh, spaghetti, carbonara or whatever. A name like title, a variable name like title, is a, a kind of name you can almost expect you'll want to use in different contexts. So this is a page title and this is a recipe title and somehow I'd like to keep my page data, the title and content and what have you, keep that clearly separated um, so as any later titles, for example Spaghetti Carbonara, will not accidentally overwrite my page title. To avoid such, such confusion, 
I go and create a class page data and that's a code block for us there now a class requires a slightly different syntax so what I've got here is a class page data with two public properties one called title one called content for me to be able to use my page data class I need to instantiate it so I create a variable name to hold a new page data object I also need my template <coughs> to um, to access title and content by the object's name and the object's name is paid data it has a title and content property so to get to the title I say so get me the title of the object of the name paid data and later give me the content of the object that has the name paid data let's take a look at that now nothing changes my better test title my site really works i want to change my content to make sure that changes are taking place and there are my better test title my site really works excellent see with html i can expect that i want to link to um, to style sheets so i want to make a link to, to some style sheet and its relation would be it is a style sheet let's do that through another property so page data CSS href might be a good name for it and for that to be available I need to create a public property CSS href and I could go and set some um, hard-coded value here for example look inside the CSS folder for a file called layout.css I don't have such a file yet but I could in the near future likewise I might want to use some JavaScript Actually, actually, a better choice could be to put the JavaScript element directly in the page data class. JavaScript, and by default, it will be empty. And then, in case, just in case I have a JavaScript that I want to use. See, by default it will be empty so by default there will be no javascripts if I'm creating a page where I do need a javascript I can add a new script element which needs to be closed obviously and that should have an src of let's imagine I keep my JavaScript in a folder called JS and I don't know animation.js so that's how I would associate a JavaScript with this page I'm creating uh, dynamically here I might go and add some more properties and use those in my template mm, let's just take a look at that refresh there's a link to a style sheet that doesn't exist yet and here's a script source pointing to a script that doesn't exist either but at least the PHP part works <clears throat> so this is all good except I'd like to keep my things a little more separate 
So I'm going to create a new folder. I like to use the word views for things you see. And I'm going to grab the entire string for creating, for templating an HTML5 page. I'm going to take that and paste it into a new PHP file, page.php, which should return such a string, a string that templates a valid HTML5 page. And then I can go and replace what I had in my index before with an include statement. Include ones use slash page dot php. Let me just check that everything works and I can do that by adding a little content. Template has now uh, encapsulated whatever, something. Let's run that. There we are. My template is still used. And I get to see my extra content here. So what I've done is I've encapsulated the HTML template for a page and I've put it in a separate file. All that file does is that it relies on a dollar page data object with a title property, a CSS, href property, content and JavaScript properties. And the generated string will be returned to wherever this is included from. It's included from index in this line of code. So this is where, where the template is loaded and merged with my page data uh, content. I want to do the same. I want to do the same with the class. Take all of this class definition and create a new folder. Classes, I guess, is a good name for a folder that will hold class definitions inside which I'll create a new PHP file, uh, page, data. I like a naming convention of having the file name exactly match the class name. So page with uppercase P underscore data with uppercase D dot class dot dot PHP. It should hold nothing except the class definition. Now, from my index, I still want to create a new page data object, but I can't do that until I've included it. So I need to include ones, look inside the classes folder for the file called page data dot class dot php. We don't really need the JavaScript, not for this demonstration anyway. You may need it in your projects, so you can use it if you really want it. Let's see. A page data object. I'm changing the, the content a little bit. There is there is a little default content here. And actually I think I prefer to not have any default values at all for the title and the content. So the new page data will have to begin, a, will create a page from scratch, page content from scratch. Same with page data title. Let's set that to my wonderful title. Save, refresh my wonderful title. Template is now encapsulated. So this is a single valid HTML5 page generated dynamically. 
I'll do another video on how to do a dynamic navigation so this will begin to look like the kinds of sites you've been working on this week. Thanks for watching.